What up dude bros, I'm Frank. This is a video review of a few dart zone blasters. Reviewing a few blasters, the Quattro Blast, a spring action, slam fire enabled cylinder fed blaster, very similar to the Nerf Zombie Strike Dominator. The Light Command, a flywheel master race belt fed fully automatic blaster, pretty unique on the market right now, with super cool flashing lights for the uh, style points. And also the Dart Storm, which is very similar to the Enforcer, also by Dart Zone. A belt fed fully automatic flywheel blaster with a 40 round belt included. Group review, but a table of contents with timestamps is in the description if you want to jump to a particular piece of this video. Starting off with lay unboxings. Included is the blaster itself with two cylinders installed, two detached, a few darts, and the instructions. Included is the blaster itself, the belt, a few darts, and the instructions. Oh, that feel. Included is the primary blaster right here, and then the chain supports, which attach to the side right here, and quite a few darts in the instructions. Now to the overview of the blaster, starting out with the Quattro Blast. This blaster is spring-powered, pump action with slam fire, and has four six-round cylinders for a total capacity of 24 darts ready to go. Overview of the components, up front of course is the priming grip, this is how you, you prime a spring-powered blaster. I think it's kind of reminiscent of the P90, but that might just be me. The amount of force required to prime this is a little bit higher than uh, Nerf blasters, but it also shoots way harder than them, which you'll see on the chrono results. Totally worth it in my opinion, but worth noting, it takes a little bit more force, but it is a smooth action as well. Kind of has a thumb hole thing going on. You don't really have to use that. You can also just pull back on it like that. Not too many front grips like this on the market, so I think it's unique, pretty cool, but it's uh, comfortable to use for sure. Up top is a Tactical Rail. This isn't an in-strike Tactical Rail because this isn't a Nerf Blaster, it's Dart Zone. And they call this an accessory track. I'm not sure if Dart Zone has accessories yet, but they did make the dimensions of this accessory track compatible with Nerf attachments, so you can put on your attachments. However, it's not an in-strike rail, so it doesn't have that little notch built into it to click into the little nub on your attachments. So there is a little bit of sliding there, but I think it's really cool that it's compatible. Now getting into the cylinders, it has four cylinders that hold six rounds each, so you have a 24 round capacity total, and it only fires from one cylinder at a time, and after you deplete that, you can hit this trigger down here in order to rotate them. As you can see, I'm having a lot of issues uh, with the reliability of this rotation mech. Once the cylinder is locked into place, it fires really well, but switching to the next cylinder, I've had to just kind of tap this repeatedly in order to get it to, to like rotate smoothly. But it seems once it's in its track, it's rotating fine right now, and it just takes kind of a minor hiccup but then occasionally it just kind of like dislodges off its track almost. With the Nerf Maverick throwback, yeah, not the strong arm, the Maverick way back in the day, sometimes the component modders referred to as the slip clutch would slip a little bit too much and not allow the rotation after you added brass barrels or heavier barrels. I immediately thought of that issue when I'm rotating this and it's just not rotating smoothly. It seems like that slip clutch or some component similar to that is just not functioning as it should. When it works, it works, but when it doesn't, it gets really annoying. <laughs> If it only halfway rotates, I've been able to just push it and um, manually move it into the next slot. And given the capacity and price point of this blaster, it's not a deal breaker in my opinion. And perhaps I have a lemon and other ones rotate just fine. I don't know, I only have this one. But other than that rotation, these cylinders don't pop out to load like a strong arm or anything. You can just hand load from the outside right here. And that's that. Again, to rotate these cylinders, you can pull this lower trigger down here. And then this primary trigger is, of course, how you fire the blaster. So single fire mode works like that. These blasters don't have air restrictors, so it, it is loud. It sounds fine when you're firing darts, but dry firing or firing without ammo, that's what dry firing is. It, it just sounds like I'm damaging the blaster. The modder in me just wants to slap me in the face every time I dry fire something like this. <laughs> but beyond single fire, you can also slam fire. So you hold down the trigger and it fires when the handle hits the front position, which allows you to raise your rate of fire, which is pretty cool. Back to the grip, there is no stock attachment point or anything, but to the grip, it is a little bit smaller in overall size, but it's comfortable, and it's not alienating to an adult or large hand. I have big hands, I complain about this stuff all the time. This is a great example of a grip that's comfortable for a small hand or a large hand. And at the bottom of it, you have a sling mount or a lanyard mount below. Those are the externals of the Quattro Blast. Next, the overview of the Light Command. This blaster is flywheel powered, and it runs on six AA alkaline batteries. Six is a little unique. We're kind of used to four, but given the power output and the velocity of this, plus the additional current requirements to turn this belt, six makes sense. But the batteries are located in the battery tray right here. To get to that, you remove the two screws, pull off the tray, throw in your six AA alkaline batteries, put back on the tray, and you're ready to fire. And that's for the important stuff to work and to fire and to actually 
actually use the blaster. But down in the grip, there's also another battery tray, which holds two AAA batteries, but these batteries are included with the blaster and these power the LEDs. So if you're an energy dork, you can't complain that, oh, I don't want these LEDs. I want that current going to my motors for maximum performance. It's a separate power source. And it's nice that that's included so you can have it light up right out of the box without adding batteries. This is a chain fed blaster like many other dart zone blasters, but this does not have a removable chain door. To load this one up, you get the included chain, which holds 20 darts, but it's also compatible with the other dart zone one. So if you want to put in the 40 belt chain, I tested it, it does work. But it doesn't have an access door, so you can actually just push in the chain and then pull like that. And you can shoot it like this and have your chain fly out on the floor, but the included chain can also snap shut which allows it to stay completely contained in the blaster. So to reload, you don't have to find your chain that fell on the floor. <laughs> Installing the chain is a little bit cumbersome. It's not a big deal to do it once, but I wouldn't recommend using this and then pulling out the chain to reload. I found it's a lot quicker to leave the chain installed and to push in the darts when you're reloading. This overview is just bouncing all over the blaster. But again, this is a flywheel power blaster. It does not have a rev switch like a lot of Nerf blasters. It just has an on switch, which is located over here. And there's actually three settings off lights and then like game mode. So it's in off mode right now, but when you go to the second stage, it doesn't work, it still doesn't shoot, but the LEDs will light up every time you press the trigger. So if you don't wanna make noise and you're not actually shooting, you can still have the lights turn on. Then when you actually wanna fling foam, you push it one more notch. And that turns on the flywheels. Again, it doesn't have a rev switch, so when you're ready to play, you turn it on. If you're holding the blaster with your right hand, you can hit the switch with your right thumb like this. So it's not like right when you decide to play nerf, you have to turn it on and just let it rev forever. So you can turn it on, fire, turn it off, which is a bit more reasonable for your ears, the battery, and you know, giving away your position. And if you can hear the audio, it is louder than a lot of nerf blasters, but that's due to its power. These flywheels are spinning faster, so they are a little bit louder, but the chrono readings are much higher than nerf blasters. Up top is one of the dart zone accessory tracks, which just like the Quattro Blast is compatible with the nerf accessories like that. But again, it doesn't have that little notch to click into the attachment, just like the Quattro Blast. So I would caution you away from using heavy your attachments. No other switches or like user inputs up here, but the front grip is really comfortable. It's kind of a weird, cool looking shape. Kind of looks like a space gun and I like the white and black. It looks like it belongs in Star Wars. Very cool looking. Not really traditional, although I don't know why a laser gun like that would be using a belt. It's like an awesome space bow and arrow. Like what? What are we doing here? But it's nice and oversized, uh, comfortable. It is a pretty simple grip, so there's really nothing that could go wrong here. And that's kind of the front area to the back, just like the Quattro Blast. It's a good example of a grip that's small yet comfortable to a big hand. And I've said it before, I'm not a huge fan of thumb hole stocks and these like front hand guards because it restricts the bottom of the grip and that's just big hand problems. I typically want that space, but it is pretty comfortable. Meaning I don't feel too restricted on the bottom end here, but if you have really fat fingers or a fat hand and like really wide hand, you might feel a little cramped up in there, but I think for most nerfers, it'll be completely fine. And bonus, the hand grip, if you go up and you just want to smack a Zambi in the face, at least your hand won't get, uh, you know, hurt. But their face will get completely shrapped. I'm just kidding. Melee, that can hurt people. Don't do that. Just, just shoot them repeatedly instead. <laughs> so that's pretty much the overview. The little blue areas you can see are where the LEDs are located. So it looks nice and pretty. Once you're in the fire mode and you press the trigger to actually fire, the lights turn on. And there's no way to my knowledge to deactivate the lights. There are only three settings. There isn't like a fourth one to turn off the lights, but still shoot. So if you're a super elite stealth operator, um, just take out the batteries for the LEDs, then they won't turn on. <laughs> That is the overview of the light command. And last, the dart storm, the, the big saw gun thing, support weapon. This is also a flywheel powered that's belt fed. This belt, however, holds 40 rounds, which is high capacity. And bonus attack element, instead of just like shooting them with a very high velocity nerf blaster, you can also get them to giggle because of the phallic appearance. I mean, come on. <laughs> The proportion's off, unless you're pulling some Lance Armstrong stuff, but you know, not one to judge. If you're like, Coop, haven't you reviewed that? Like a green version? That's actually a different blaster. This is the Enforcer. The belts are compatible, but I think the Enforcer, or one of these is a Walmart exclusive. They're very similar and the performance is pretty much the same, but there are a few little differences. Primarily, this chain is exposed, whereas this one is hidden within the balls or the uh, side drum things. And this is a continuous chain when, when you don't disconnect it for the test firing of this blaster. Whereas this one is by design an open belt. So once you're done shooting, it shoots the belt out. So if if you're doing some hardcore inverted like stuff, the belt will fall out of the blaster. Unlike the light command as well, which no matter what, the chain will stay on the blaster. This is more true to the, the chain fed support weapon like roots. The included chain holds 40 rounds and you can daisy chain these together. It becomes a weight issue when the, this feeding mech has to pull a giant chain, but it can be done. And I might just test how big of a chain you can do in future videos, I don't know. But to install the chain in the dart storm, you push this little button and then lift up the component they call the breech cover. You get your chain, which, you know, 
should be loaded, not unloaded. Then you place the first dummy round right on the center and shut the breech cover. It's far easier when you're setting it down on something, but I don't think many nerfers stand up like an idiot talking to cameras all day, so it shouldn't be an issue for you. And I've had the most reliable feeding when you put in just the tip first, or <laughs> so you put in the tip and then let the rest of the belt fall on top of it, as opposed to putting in the tip last like that. That's because this belt is applying pressure on the, the bottom belt, which the feeding mechanism is trying to pull. And you want to make it as easy as possible for it. So you put in the tip first, <laughs> then you slide in the rest of it. Then you're ready to fire if, if you have a loaded chain. Just like the enforcer and also the light command, it doesn't have a rev trigger. So you turn it on and it's just always on. This also runs on six AA alkaline batteries, just like the light command. And just like the enforcer, the battery tray is on the side right here. So you remove the screws, take off the light panel, install your batteries, reinstall the cover, and you're good to go. This doesn't have LEDs or anything fancy, so it only has two settings off and on. And once it's in the on position, it revs all the time. And once it's revving to fire, you press the trigger right here. Even though this looks like a button, it's, it's not a button. Just like the enforcer, like, it, it, I just need it to be a button. It looks like a button, so I just want to, I just need it to do something. I don't know. The back grip is really simple, and even though it's a small blaster, it's kind of weird to hold just with one hand, so the front handle comes into play here. It pivots a little bit, so you can hold it with your front hand, and then pew pew like that very comfortably. Yeah, pew pew's a verb, bro. Look it up. The swag dictionary. <laughs> even though it's a pretty intimidating blaster, um, that's pretty much all the functional stuff to go over. The front barrel here is fixed. It's not removable or anything, and it kind of looks like a barrel shroud for, like, heat dissipation. That's the support weapon kind of look. But for nerf applications, it's just for the intimidation factor. And, yeah, it's a pretty simple blaster to use. Once you load in the chain, you turn it on, you press the trigger, pew pew. Super long intro. Now to the firing test. Quattro Blast in single fire mode. I can count really good. <laughs> Rotating. Trying to rotate. There we go. Quicker rate of fire, still with the dart zone darts. Lay slam fire works just like nerf blasters where I hold down the trigger, pump, and then when I hit the forward position, it fires. Pew pew. Now firing little valentine darts. Sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta do the air kick. Firing the dart zone darts with the included belt. <laughs> the pusher back apparently didn't finish its cycle and it just, I just had a negligent discharge. That's hilarious. Like 99% of the time it's human error. That was totally electronic. <laughs> Slow or single fire-ish. Full auto. Now firing little valentine darts. Again, are you kidding me? Like what the F, David Blaine? That's a safety hazard. Well, don't turn this on while you're looking down the barrel. A lot of. That grouping dough. A little bit of single fire. Very easy to just fire one. Full auto. And now I'm out. So now I have some little valentine darts. The red belt is from my enforcer, but all these belts are cross compatible.
performance opinion one by one, starting with the Quattro Blast. Firing velocity is great. The pump action is really smooth. The loading per cylinder is reliable, so you can shoot off those six rounds really well. But as I mentioned, I experienced quite a few issues with the rotation of the cylinder system. As you could probably tell, the dart zone darts are very inaccurate and they pretty much just suck. They shoot hard and reliably, but you know, they just go all over the place. They're like Nerf Elite darts. But just like Dart Zone's previous like kind of relaunch, they changed the dart design. So these are compatible with Nerf Elite darts. And since Nerf Elite darts also suck, more importantly, they're compatible with like Little Valentine and third party darts. So I shot those on camera just to show the blasters aren't super inaccurate. It's, it's also just the Dart Zone darts. Threw this up on the chronograph and I got an average velocity of 87 feet per second with Dart Zone darts and 88 feet per second with Nerf Elite darts, which is quite a bit faster than the 70 FPS average for the Nerf Elite line. Higher velocity not only means better range, but also your darts will get to your opponent before their darts get to you. So you can pop out, shoot, and hide before their darts can actually get to you, assuming you both press the trigger at the same time. And I'm not surprised, the last round of blasters by Dart Zone shot way faster than other nerf alternatives. So performance, pretty solid. That's the Quattro Blast. Now to the light command. Firing this blaster is pretty fun. It doesn't have a switch to switch from semi to fully automatic, but it's an electronically controlled semi-auto, so if you just barely touch the trigger, it's really easy to only fire one if you only want to fire one. But then you hold down the trigger and go pew 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 and it shoots full auto. So really easy to control there. And just like the Quattro Blast, this is also compatible with Nerf Elite darts. I also put this one up on my chronograph and I got an average of 93 feet per second with both the Dart Zone darts and Nerf Elite darts which is much faster than the 70 FPS par for the Nerf Elite line. So faster pew pewing is always better, bros. And lastly, to the Dart Storm. Firing the blaster is a blast. Loading the blaster isn't that big a deal. Like when I showed you standing up, it is tricky. If you set it down on a couch or on a table, it's really simple. Doing it while you're standing, not really recommended. And if you're running around and you're an outdoor nerfer, be cautious with this one because it's not a continuous loop of the belt cartridges. When you get to your last dart, if you're like turning or anything, the belt can completely fall out of the blaster. And if you keep running, then you're not gonna be able to shoot the blaster anymore. If you're up on a couch, just post it up like kind of the support roll. It's not an issue at all. It just very cleanly feeds into the empty right ball over here or the, the right chamber, whatever this is called. Empty drum, testicle, what? I put this one up in my chronograph and I got an average of 95 feet per second with both dart zone darts and Nerf Elite darts, which is again, way faster than the 70 FPS par for the Nerf Elite line. And to kind of put that into perspective, the Elite par right now is about 70 FPS. The modified Nerf stripes that I field and a lot of HVZers use shoot about 110 to 120 FPS. So exceeding 90 FPS for an unmodified Nerf blaster with alkaline, like standard store-bought batteries is fantastic. So performance out of all of these dart zone blasters is fantastic. Fantastic. And since they're cross compatible with Nerf Elite darts and by extension the third party darts designed for Nerf blasters, you can have awesome Super Elite power with you know, precision and accuracy. Little Valentine, E-Kind, other third party like Waffle Style or Accurate Strike darts are definitely recommended for that awesome Super Elite sniper status precision because the Dart Zone darts are just as bad as Nerf Elite darts. But they look a whole lot cooler. I, I like green and blue, so I might be biased, but they look sweet, even though they're, they're bad. Conclusions on each blaster, starting out with a Quattro Blast. Slam fire enabled spring powered blaster for those that don't want to use the flywheel blasters, it performs well. 24 dart capacity is pretty solid for a blaster of this size, but I experienced a lot of the rotation issues which really just kind of turned me off of this blaster. The Dart Zone Magnum holds a whole lot more and it's actually even smaller, so I'd recommend you look at that unless you just really, really want Slam Fire. Slam Fire seems like the only reason you'd buy the Quattro Blast instead of the Magnum by Dart Zone. But of course, that's just my opinion. My opinion on the light command is really positive. Air Warriors released a bunch of like quasi nerf blasters and that might be an offensive term to use but I think the majority of this market is it's nerf or nothing so whatever. So it's nice to see Dart Zone release something that's similar enough that we like it and we're just familiar with it like flywheels and awesome performance but the belt feeding is unique and it gives you something that nerf isn't currently offering. Is it for everyone? No. But it worked as it was supposed to and belts offer you know pros of not having to take the magazine out completely to load. You can always load the belt while it's still in the blaster. And the Dart Zone belts are compatible with each other so you can put in the 40 round belt inside the light command if you want to increase your capacity. You're going to have some serious floppation with that belt floating around, but you know, you can deal with it for that extra capacity. It's also really easy to just fire one to conserve ammo, but then firing full auto is super easy. The always on is something I don't really like. I prefer a rev trigger, but it fits some people's play styles. And the light command's on off switch is close enough to the grip that you can activate it without like dramatically changing your hand and it's not too slow or anything. Overall opinion of the light command is positive and I also like the lights. I think it's pretty cool. Reminds me of Star Wars or Buzz Lightyear. And to the 
dart storm. I really like this blaster. It personally doesn't really fit my play style because it's just larger, but it doesn't seem like it's really built to be your primary, like you're running around playing an HVZ event or something. If you post up in a couch in like a Fort War inside your house, this blaster will completely wreck everyone around you because it has almost 100 FPS velocity. I mean, 95 with elite darts, cross compatible with nerf elite darts, and by extension, the third party darts. So awesome performance out of the box, high capacity and compatible with the other belts. It's pretty great. And the belt doesn't loop. It's more of a strip, which is a con because if you are running around, you can drop the belt on accident. But because it's not connected, it's much easier to throw that belt away, like out of your workspace, grab another loaded belt and load it up and keep firing or just daisy chain like 30 of them together just to shoot for days. And uh, bonus, <laughs> I just need to shoot white darts and it'll be even funnier. Super long group review. These blasters are just now launching, so I'll have uh, purchase links in the description box when I can find them. And Dart Zone also just released a rival compatible blaster, which is cross compatible with the balls and the magazines. I'll have a review on that in a few days. That's this review. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, bros, stay tactical. You like my shirt? I have them available on Teespring. Link in the description box and an on-screen annotation right here. Just, just click it. Just click it. See you.